Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. This video is an update for my Pan Those Eyeshadows project. I have hit pan on three out of the five eyeshadows I was working on this month, and I also hit quite a few bonus pans as well, so this is probably one of my more exciting updates. No makeup today. I'm going to the pool with James right after I finish filming, and so I didn't really see the point in putting on a full face of makeup just to immediately wash it off, so... Before I start, I did want to give a shout out to Alexi. She's the one who created this video idea. I got inspiration from her and Rebecca Morgan, so I'll have their videos and anyone else I can find. I'll link them in the description box. I've been binge watching these videos lately. They're one of my favorite ones to watch at the moment. So I have as many people as I can linked in the description box. And I will put a photo of the five shadows that I was working with this month right here. Now let's talk about the three eyeshadows in my quintet that I hit pan on this month. The first one is from the Milani Most Loves Matte Palette and it's in the shade Catch a Tan. I randomly chose this in April of 2019 so it did take a full three months of very consistent use in order to hit pan on it. It was a very stubborn shade, I'll be honest with you. I used it in the crease, I used it on the lower lash line, sometimes I used it all over the lid to do like a really matte uh, warm brown kind of smoky eye but not really and it still just would not budge. I don't know why it took so long to hit pan on that but I'm very glad to have finally done it. The next one is from my Tarte and Bloom palette and it's in the shade Sweetheart. It is this matte pinky cree shade right here. This one I randomly chose in May of 2019 so I've been working on it for two months of fairly consistent use as well. It's a really beautiful shade. I enjoyed having like a pinky little hint of pink in the crease every once in a while. Now I have what is it? Five pans in this palette. That's very, very exciting. And the last one I hit pan on is one that I only recently chose last month, and that's from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry palette. It's in the shade Teak, and it is this really, really pretty shimmery bronze color. There are two main reasons why I hit pan on this as quickly as I did, having only had it in my project for a month, and that is because one, Anastasia Beverly Hills palette formulas typically are a little bit more powdery, they're a little bit easier to hit pan on, and the second one is this was a really great all over the lid shade. I would wet it and put it all over my lid, I'd put it into the crease, I'd put it on my little lash line and create like a really smoky, bronzy look, and I really, really loved that look. I wore that a ton, especially at the beginning of the month, and I do have a photo of that in my looks that I'll have later. I really, really like the shade. I luckily have another shade just like this in another palette, so for some reason if I end up finishing this one, I have a whole nother eyeshadow very similar to it. Let me show you. It's Dethrone here in the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette. Very similar, probably not as shimmery and maybe just a hair darker, but will still give me a very similar look. I guess I just never realized how much I love that shade. So I did really enjoy creating a lot of bronzy looks this month thanks to that shade Teak. Now let's look at the two eyeshadows that I randomly chose last month but did not hit pan on. The first one is from the Tartlet in Bloom palette. It was this darker brown shade here called Activist. I do have a pretty decent dip in it. I do use it regularly to deepen up the outer third of my eye look or to use it as a liner or to deepen up whatever liner I already have on my eye. It's a very true chocolate brown, like a dark chocolate brown. And I don't really reach for these darker shades as often as other shades in this palette, but I was um, glad to have an excuse to reach for it more and kind of create more dramatic looks. I really loved it with the bronzy tones that I was playing with this month. I don't think I will hit pan on it next month unless I'm using it like all over the lid to create a really dark smoky eye, which I don't know if I will. I've tried it before and I wasn't 100% crazy about how that looks on me. We'll see. I do enjoy using it. It definitely has a place in my makeup routine every day, but I do imagine that this one will take me a little bit longer to hit pan on. The next eyeshadow is a shade called Ember. This is also from the Sultry palette. I was focusing on Teak for the majority of the first half, first two-thirds of the month and so I was able to hit pan on that one and that meant I didn't really give a lot of attention to Ember. I do have a little bit of a dip. This is very similar to Teak. I used it in a lot of the same ways so it is something that I use all over the lid on the lower lash line. I can even use it in the crease a little bit for like an all-over bronzy gold look. I really love the shadows. I love this palette. There is a tiny bit of glitter fallout but I think that's more user error than than the actual formula. I think that's something I could easily prevent or be better about if I was better at applying makeup, so I'm working on it. I am working on incorporating like a glitter primer more often. I'm really excited to be playing with Ember. I think that's such a pretty unique shade in my collection, and I definitely can see myself having hit pan on that next month. 
All right, now for my bonus pans. I hit pan on three shades outside of the set of five that I was working on this month. The first one is from the Queen of Hearts palette from Colored Rain, and it's in the shade Crown. It's this white shade here. It looks white, but it's actually kind of like a duochrome shade. It has a really nice peachy shift. I use this solely as an inner corner highlight, and this has been a complimentary shade in the past. I've been working on it quite a bit, and I finally hit pan. This one took a long time. I imagine trying to hit pan on any of these shadows will take a very long time because the pans are deeper, but I am hoping maybe this month I can choose a color from this palette. I have yet to randomly pick any of the shades from this palette, um, and so I'm hoping I can get at least one during the course of this project so I can pull out this palette a little bit more. And the other two shades I hit pan on are from the Stila Soul palette. I was using these just kind of as extra shades to finish my look. Whenever I hit pan on the Cachetan crease shade and the other pink shade from the Tartlet and Bloom palette, I reached for this shade right here, which is Heart. It's kind of like a purpley mauve, cool toned crease shade for me. And like I've mentioned before, the pans in this palette are a little bit thinner. And maybe because I've had this palette for like three or four years now, maybe the formula is changing and it's a little bit easier to hit pan on. But I hit pan on that crease shade pretty easily. And I also hit pan on Kitten, which is this really pretty champagne peachy color right here. I used this one as an inner corner highlight after I hit pan on Crown from the Queen of Hearts palette. So they were just kind of like shadows that helped me finish the look, which is why I call them complimentary shades. And I just so happened to hit pan on both of them this month, and I'm very excited. Now I have six shades in this palette that have pan on them. That means half of the palette has pan showing, which is very exciting. So six pans this month. Now let's look at how my pan percentage has increased over the past month. So at the end of May, in my last update, I had hit pan on 17% of my eyeshadows. 23 out of the 135 shadows that I owned had pan on them. Since then, I have purchased two new ColourPop singles and I've hit pan on six shades. So now I have pan in 29 eyeshadows out of 137, meaning my pan percentage is now 21.2%, which means I have surpassed the 20% goal that I had set for myself. I did have a pan percentage of 6% at the beginning of the year, so it's not like I went from zero to 21 within six months, but I am very proud of how much progress I've made over the course of this project. It's easily one of my favorite projects that I've ever done. Now I'm more confident than ever that I can hit my 25% goal by the end of the year, if not surpass it. Now for my favorite part of the video, picking three new shadows to incorporate into my quintet. I have taken out all of the shades that I already hit pan on or the ones that I'm working on currently, and I now have 107 shadows to choose from, and I will use my pretty random app to randomly generate three numbers. And like always, I'm going to do it on the screen with you. I'm going to make the minimum one and the maximum 107. And if you ever notice, whenever you watch videos like this, it always automatically goes to 49. And I don't know why it does that. So my first choice is number 53. Okay, so the first shadow I randomly chose is from the Milani Most Loves Matte Palette, and it's in the shade Umber the Sun, which is this really pretty dark brown. It's definitely a warm brown. I'm currently working on a darker brown already in my quintet, so I don't know how much progress I'm going to be able to make. And also, these are a little bit harder to hit pan on. If it's anything like Catch a Tan, it's going to take a while. <laughs> now let's look at the next number. Next number is 40. Okay, so I have good news and bad news. Good news, I finally randomly generated a shade from the Colored Green Queen of Hearts palette. Bad news, it's one of my least favorite shades in the palette. It's Ladyship. It's this really pretty matte purple color, and while I do like this color a lot, I much prefer my single from ColourPop in the shade 143, just because that one's a little bit creamier. This one is a little bit drier and a little bit harder to build and blend, but I'm sure I can make it work. It's a fantastic under the lower lash line color, which I have no problem using it in that way. So I'm feeling relatively neutral. I am excited to be able to pull out this palette more, but I'm not excited to be using that shade in particular on a regular basis. And now for the final color, 68. Oh dang, I got a single. So the third shade that I randomly chose is a single from Cleona Cosmetics. It is another duochrome shade. It's a really, really pretty pinky peach duochrome. That is a beautiful shade. I cannot wait to play with that more. Okay, so this is my set of five shadows that I'll be playing with this month. This first one is Umber the Sun by Milani. 
This is Ladyship by Colored Rain. This is Prophecy by Cleona. This is Ember by Anastasia Beverly Hills from the Sultry palette. And this is Tarte Activist from the In Bloom palette. So I'm excited to have two more colorful shades. I do still have three brownish shades to play with, um, but that's not a bad thing. I can definitely use this to deepen up the crease, this to deepen out the outer third, and then play with these three colors in the process as well. I'm very excited to have like a duochrome shade in here and a really pretty purple eyeshadow as well. I do think that a lot of these shades being singles or shades that I don't use a lot, they're going to take a long time to hit pan on, but hopefully I have some progress to share with you next month. Now I'm going to show you a photo of all of the months so far, so January through June, well January through July technically, each month's palette that I was working with. And then I will have a little slideshow of all the looks that I created this month using my quintet and some other shadows as well. But in the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.